And here we are, how to fit a transwave converter or inverter for your Myford lathe. Now here's the motor taken off the bracket and if you look into the terminal block we have to change this from a 440 volt machine and you'll notice that here we have the A, the B and the C down here and then here is the N and we've got to swap these wires over and I'll show you what we do with these three wires that are down here we've got to put them on these terminals up here and to do that you get a set of instructions and here's the diagram explaining which numbers or which letters go to which terminals so it's all there done for you now here we are we've got all the three cables off and we've got the black one now on with the blue down here right, we've now got white and yellow on terminal B and there we have terminal A with red and brown so now we've got two wires on each terminal and then this terminal at the end, terminal N, uh, that's now blank. There's nothing on there at all. And now we have the lead connected. You can see all the three terminals all connected up with the black with one of the phases. And here's the green earth. So, job done. Now here's the Imo Jaguar Club. You pull it off. Lovely set of instructions on the put. And the single phase left is live. L2 is neutral. That's the input. And then the motor is UVW connected here. And these terminals are just underneath here. Relatively easy to get at. So there's the live, the neutral, and then the three phases, one, two, three, over here. And that's all you need to know. So here's all the wiring connected up. There's the cable going off to the uh, motor. And here's the live and neutral input and the earth terminals on the left. So now we're going to fire up and see if she works. Right, we're now connected up into the wall and the processor is now live here and the motor's in the little box here. We're just going to check the circuits out to make sure it all runs okay. And so we press start and we turn up the motor and you can see there the motor's turning and if we see here you can see the percentage, we're running at 9%, so if we run it up a little bit, motor's running up, and uh, we're now up to 50, and that's uh, 50 hertz, so she's running at full chat. So we've demonstrated that this thing is working as it should be, so now we're going to connect up the uh, remote control system, and I'll show you how that goes. Now the lead's got a daunting number of wires. Don't worry, on the back of the instructions is how you put them and to make life really simple there's a little diagram or a photograph showing where all the terminals go and just remember that this one is grey over here and this one is the pink. And over on the terminal here there are all the terminals and the only thing is they're pretty small um, slotted and crosshead screws so you need a jewellery set to uh, use them. Right, now there's all the wiring done, it's all nice and simple, pink up there. You now have to reset the program so that it will operate now on the remote unit and there's a set of instructions here and you just follow it down all the way through. It's program reset, function data, enter the value and so these are these two buttons here I won't run through it now, but it is dead simple. Just follow the instructions and job done. And so now the moment of truth. Will it run properly? So we press the motor and it's on jog. So if we press the motor and you can see the spindle started up. And it's going all the way up to full speed. But if we come down here and turn it down. Motor's going all the way down to jogging. If we hit reverse, motor goes into reverse, hit stop, and it stops. And if we put it into jog, it'll actually just jog along. If I just touch the button, it'll just move a little bit. Look at that. And in reverse. So the system's all working properly, so now we put it back on the lathe and we're all systems ready to go. Well, here we are with it all set up on the Myford. There's the uh, trans or inverter over here. 
These controls are all disconnected and all the electrics in this box have been abandoned and the inverter just feeds into the remote control here and it's all plugged in on the wall over here. So for a quick demo we switch it all on, power up, the inverter's powered up and it's flashing its numbers and over here we have the control and we'll set it down to, to a low speed, to zero, we're in forward, we're in run, so we press start and we come over to the chuck and nothing happens and so we crank it up a little bit and there we can make the motor spin around and uh, if you see here we've just got it on a low speed and she's trundling around. Now I've actually disconnected the safety switches to make it easier so that it's very nice to be able to control it and then bring her up like that. And then here we go, if we, if we wind her up now you'll hear the motor coming up and there she is running at full speed. So here we are at full speed and uh, we're going to come here and we're going to throw the reverse switch. Look at this. It slows all the way down and goes all the way backwards again. <laughs> and I've just uh, wound it all the way down to zero. Isn't that magic? Of course the next decision is which gear do you have it on on the belt. Now I've actually got it on the full high speed so it goes from a fairly low speed up to the full 2000 but if we swap it back here and uh, run the belt down onto the very low speed you can see what that does in terms of making the lathe um, even more operable. So come here switch it on and when we actually start the lathe going it'll go at that sort of speed if we just turn it on to one here we're still in reverse at the moment so I'll put it in forward and it'll go forward like that so if you're clocking something up with a dial indicator you can just do it like that isn't that just amazing and then just turn it up a little bit higher and there we are that's at maximum speed on here, which would obviously be down at 380, uh, sorry, at 53. So we're down at 53 now, and then we can wind all the way down to. Uh, be interesting to see if you can count them. Whoops, there we go. There, look at that. One. <laughs> so one revolution per second. And that's because we're only going along at 1.42 hertz. I don't know if you can read that in there. 1.42. So this is revolving at 1.42 revolutions uh, per second. Pretty good, eh? Yeah, I've now got it down to 0.49, which is half a rev per second. And if you come and watch the chuck, there she is, just slowly revolve it. And you can try and stop it, but you can't. She's got some torque there. So if you were mucking about setting something up, you can do it extremely carefully and then just come over here, wind it up a little bit and then up to whatever speed you want. So that's your Transwave inverter, converter fitted and here they all are, ring the man himself.